Hello sixth graders, we are in unit 3A, prime factorization, so make sure you have that title written down. Our learning target for today, I can identify numbers as prime and composite. I can use prime factorization to determine the factors of whole numbers, and I can express a whole number as a product of prime factors with exponents. This is a little review for us on prime or composite numbers because this will help with our prime factorization today because um, we are breaking down numbers into prime numbers. Remember, a prime number can only be divided by one in itself, whereas composite numbers have more than those two factors. So just some examples to go through. You can just list the number and we'll write down if it's prime or composite. So 17, well, its only factors are 1 and 17, so that makes it a prime number. 11, again, 1 and 11 is the only factors, so then it would be prime. For 15, um, the factors 1, 3, 5, 15, so therefore it's composite. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 are all factors of it, so it's a composite number. Like I said, I'm just going through this quickly since it is a review. 24 has lots of factors. 1, 2, um, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. So therefore, it is composite. Let's try that again. And then remember 1. The only factor that it has is 1. But in order to be prime, it has to have two factors. And composite has more than two. So it is neither. Okay, we have some vocab here to write down, so go ahead and write the prime factorization, this part right here that's highlighted, and then I want you to write what's in the blue for the definition. So it's when a composite number is written as a product of prime numbers. Okay, so we're going to be breaking it down. We'll see exactly what that means here in a second. And then factor tree, this helps us to find the prime factorization, um, and then we have some examples here of what they look like. So for factor tree here for 60, you can see we have 60 at the top, and then we are breaking down this number into all the numbers that multiply together to make 60, and we keep going until at the very, very end, we only have prime numbers left. Um, and then these are both factor trees of 60. They started out differently, notice 6 and 10, 12 and 5, but at the very end, we end up with the same answer. So we're going to go through what exactly is happening there, um, but I also want you to write down the vocab words for product of primes with the definitions and factors. So product of primes, prime numbers that are being multiplied together, um, that's like what this is right here. And then factors, those are the numbers that you multiply together to make another number. So we are going to try the prime factorization for the number 24. We're going to break that down into prime numbers. Um, and we have two methods, so I want you to write down both methods. And then you get to choose which one makes more sense to you to use in the end. So for factor tree, we start with 24 at the top. And now we're going to split this into two numbers that multiply to make 24. Well, I know 2 and 12 can multiply together to make 24. So I'm going to write those both down. And then I'm going to ask myself, is 2 a prime number? And it is, so I'm going to circle it, and that means that that one is done. I'm not going to break it up anymore. 12 is not prime, so I can split that one again. Um, and I know that 2 and 6 can both be multiplied together to make 12. Again, 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. 6 is composite, so I can keep splitting it. I can do 2 times 3, which those are both prime numbers. So they, um, I'm going to circle both of them. And now I'm done. Once I get to the prime numbers, that's where I stop. And then I'm going to write them out as the product of primes. So that means to write what's happening. And I'm always going to just write them least to greatest. Okay. And this right here is what we call expanded form. And then just like with a powers and exponents when we had that lesson, we can also write it in exponential form. So we have 2 that's being multiplied by itself 3 times, so I could write it as 2 to the power of 3 times 3, and there would be our final answer. The other method is the divide by primes. So this one I start with 24, and I make an upside down division bracket, and I find a number, um, a prime number, that it can be divided by. Well, 24 can be divided by 2, which is a prime number. 
So I write that on the outside, and then I say, okay, 24 divided by 2 is 12, so that goes down below. This is also kind of like the cake method. Now that one can be divided again, and the prime number it can be divided by is 2. You have to make sure that you are always dividing it by prime numbers, though. Like 12 can be divided by 6, but that's not a prime number. So now we divide 12 divided by 2 is 6. Make another layer, because 6 can be divided by 2 again, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now that's a prime number, so it can't be divided anymore. So then all of this is our answer, which if you notice, is the same as when we did the tree method. So either method works. This one will come in handy when we get to greatest common factor and least common multiple. Now I want you to pause and try these this on your own. Um, before you make a decision of which method you like better, I want you to try both of them for 18, so the factor tree and the divide by primes. So let's start with the factor tree method. Start with 18, two numbers that multiply to eight, make 18, and we cannot use 1 and 18, because remember, 1 is not a prime number. We're trying to get down to prime numbers in the end. So I'm going to use 2 and 9. You could also have started with 3 and 6. 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. 9, two numbers that multiply to make 9 would be 3 and 3, both of which are prime numbers, so I'm going to circle them. So I'll write it out least to greatest in expanded form, and then I can rewrite it in exponential form, 2 times 3 squared, because there's two 3's happening. Now dividing by prime numbers. Um, I'm going to start with 3 on this one, because 18 can be divided by 3, which is a prime number. Now, 18 divided by 3 is 6, so I write that down below. That's a composite number, so I can keep dividing. Um, 6 can be divided by 2, which is a prime number. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That's um, a prime number, so I stop, and the numbers on the side and bottom are my answer. Write them in order from least to greatest, and we end up with the same answer. 2 times 3 times 3, or 2 times 3 squared. Okay, find the product of primes, which is the same as the prime factorization, and using either method. So pause, try these two on your own, and you can pick to either use the tree method or the divide by primes. So 285, I'm going to use the tree method on this one. Um, I know 285 can be divided by 5 because it ends in a 5. Now 285 divided by 5 is 57. So I know 5 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. And then 57, we might think it's prime, but actually it's a composite number. It can be divided by 3 and 19. 3 is prime, and 19 is also prime. So now let's write this in um, order from least to greatest. There's no duplicate, so we don't have any exponents on this one. So then that's where we stop. Now 160, this one I'll try the dividing by primes. Um, I know it can be divided by 2 which is a prime number, and 160 divided by 2 is 80. That can again be divided by 2, which would be 40. And again, divide by 2, which would be 20. 20 divided by 2 would be 10, and I can divide that by 2 again, which would get me 5. That's prime, so that's where we stop. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 2s. 1, 2... 3, 4, 5, and then we also have the times 5, and then we could also write it again with the, in exp, uh, exponential form, so 2 to the power of 5 times 5, because there was 5 2's in our answer. So again, you get to choose which method makes more sense to you. I will say that this method comes in handy, like I said, for greatest common factor, so at least be comfortable enough to use it, um, but really whichever one you prefer. You will see me most often using the tree diagram. Now we have prime factorization when we have an algebraic expression, which remember means that it involves letters. So 18CD. What we're going to do is we're going to do the prime factorization for the number, ignore the letters, and then we'll add them on at the end. So um, let's start with 18 and do my factor tree. 2 times 9. 2 is prime. 9 can be multiplied by 3 and 3. 3 is prime for both of these. So if I write this in expanded form, we would have 2 times 3 times 3 times C 
times D. So notice I now took those letters and I added them on at the end, splitting them up C times D. Okay. So take your numbers from your factor tree and then include the, um, the letters at the end. The next one, 50x squared times y squared. So again, let's start with the 50, ignore the letters for now, and let's make our factor tree. So 50 can be divided by 5 and 10. Um, 5 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. And 10 can be divided by 2 and 5. Both of those are prime. And you might have started with 2 and 25, but you should have then ended up with the same answer that I have. So if I write this in expanded form, we've got 2 times 5 times 5. And now with x squared, that means that there's two x's. And I really should have used the dots. I'm going to switch over here to the dots since I don't want them getting confused with my multiplication sign or my x's. Um, okay, so we have two x's. So I would write that out as times x times x. And then same thing with the y. We have two y's. So we would write it as times y times y. So don't forget, we take those letters and add them on at the end. If we had written this in exponential form, we would have a 2 times 5 squared times x squared times y squared. And you'll just have to pay close attention because usually the questions will ask you if they want it in expanded or in exponential form. Um, I forgot on this one, if I had done exponential, it would have been 2 times 3 squared times c times d. Last part here, missing the prime factor. So now we have these problems, um, but we're missing something that goes here to equal 1,500. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much I have so far. So I'm going to figure out what is 2 squared times 3. Well, 2 squared would be 4 times 3. And all of that has to equal, and then something, right, equals 1,500. So 4 times 3 is 12. So 12 times what equals 1,500? So now I'm going to do some division. Take 1,500 and I'm going to divide it by 12, which would be 125. So some number is uh, going to equal 125. But remember, these have to be prime numbers. Um, so I can't say 125 because that's not a prime number. So that means some prime number multiplied probably a couple times is going to equal 125. So thinking to myself, I know that if I take 5 and I multiply it by 5, that's 25. And then 25 times another 5 equals 125. So that means here's my prime number. And in that empty spot, it would be... Um, just erase this box here. It would be 5 to the power of 3 because it takes 3 of those. So now if we went through and we figured out 2 squared times 5 cubed times 3, it would equal the 1,500. So let's try another one. So 3 times 2 to the power of 4 times something equals 1,200. So let's see what this all would actually multiply out what we have so far. So... 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, times another 2 is 16. So we have 3 times 16 times something equals 1,200. Um, so 3 times 16, which is 48 times something, equals 1,200. So then we're going to do division. So we're going to take 1,200 and divide it by 48, which is 25. So some number, probably written in exponential form, is going to equal 25. Well, I know that 5 times 5 is 25, so that means in this empty spot would be 5 squared. Okay, I'm not going to go through these ones, but I want you to try them in your notebook. I'm going to look to see if they are done tomorrow. So pause, try these three problems. Prime factorization of 34, 
prime factorization of 52 gh squared, and then find the missing prime number that would fit there for 2 squared times something equals 100. That's all for prime factorization. Make sure to go back and rewatch any parts that you are stuck on, and then make sure that your no notes are in your backpack and at school ready to go tomorrow.